Terry. Welcome to another episode of the Historical and Heritage Society. Well, I have the pleasure today of being here with Dick Vernon. Now, Dick Vernon had, was the pharmacist at our first pharmacy, which was Vernon's Drug here on Key Biscayne. He and his dad started it in 1951. Hi, Dick. Thanks so much for being here. And we're sitting here at the Beach Club, right between, what is it, the Sands on one side and Ocean Club on the other. Exactly. Well, I'm just glad I'm still here. <laughs> And it's uh, been a long time. I've been on the key since 51. It's now, uh, now it's 19, what, 2010. So that's a long time. It's and a long time. When uh, you and your dad started the, um, the drugstore guy on Key Biscayne, how did that come about? I mean, did the key need a drugstore? Well, was your dad a druggist? Or what well, no, my dad actually was, had worked for the Mackles during World War II. And after the war, and he saw Mackles were going to develop Key Biscayne, he went to the office and asked uh, Bob Mackle, he says, uh, you know, I'd really like to get a business out there. How about a drugstore? Uh, no, that's wrong. How about a gas station? <laughs> a gas and, station? And, and Mackle said, Gee, I'm sorry, Harry. The, I've already promised the gas station. Yeah. But nobody's asked for the drugstore. Would you like that? So that's how I said, Gee, if I had any luck at all, I'd have pumped gas all my life. And I would have got, dad would have got a gas station because I was in the service. And I came home from Korea about that time. and. Uh, so that worked out good. Instead of uh, pumping gas all my life, I counted pills. So <laughs> he became a pharmacist. Right. So the key needed a pharmacy, a, right. a, a drug store. They already had a gas station. How many gas stations were on the key? Eventually, there became six of them. Oh my gosh, you would have been one of yeah, many. Yeah, one of many, and they uh, they all were down to two now. So it just goes to show you. It, it is amazing how one road takes you one way and another road it, takes you another. Exactly. And then you went to pharmacy school, became a pharmacist. Right. I got out of the service, went to the GI Bill, got home and started full time in the drugstore in 1956 and never, never left and, uh, until we closed in 94. I know you've been quite a and fixture here on the key. Been retired ever since and I love it and I said, well, maybe I'll go back to work someday, but never happened. <laughs> It hasn't happened. Now your son, um, Bob Vernon, or Buzz Vernon, he's right. the mayor. Right. And he was uh, born and raised on the key, he and his sister. And uh, they both never left. And Debbie's taught school at St. Agnes for 18 years now. And oh Buzz God. is in the real estate business and became mayor. And that's, he worked for me in the drugstore until 94 when I closed. And it's probably the best thing ever happened to him because he did very well in real estate. Yeah, and Buzz. I uh, know we call him Buzz or Bob. How did yeah. he get that name? Well, he uh, was like all the other kids in high school back in the uh, 60s, uh, early 70s. He had long hair to his shoulders, and one day he just went out and had it all cut off. Everybody <laughs> was shocked, came back with a, a crew cut, and yeah. uh, the kids all started to call him Buzz because he had a buzz cut, and <laughs> it sort of caught on. And uh, he, a lot of the other kids started cutting their hair off, and they looked a lot better, I thought. Yeah, it started a trend. What, right. did you, what did your wife think about it? Well, she didn't recognize him at first because we never saw his ears in many <laughs> years, you know, but now he, he had a haircut, so uh, that was, we're pretty proud of him. Always been proud of him. Yeah, well, that's pretty terrific. And then uh, your daughter, Debbie, uh, she's got uh, a family here on the key. Oh, yeah, she's, they got, she's raised her three children, and Buzz raised his two children, so I've never... No, he never left the key, and back when houses were affordable, I, I bought, a, I had a couple extra houses, and uh, when they got married, I gave them a house, so that I got to see the grandchildren raised, and... Oh, weren't you smart? Yeah, it worked out real well, you know, back when houses were, I paid 13500 for mine, the first one, and I thought that was a lot of money, but it turned out it was a good buy. <laughs> Everything's relative, isn't it? <laughs> but weren't you smart? To, right. You wanted your kids here to stay here, so you got to meet your house. Exactly. Pretty clever. Well, we're sitting here at the Beach Club. Now, this uh, building dates back to, what, 1951? Well, it started in 51 as a, this, not this exact building. It was just a little like a garage that they flipped up. And, for a, and as they, then they added in, they built another building that was all screen, half this size. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, Hurricane Betsy in 65 took away the trees out front and the front, and then they, they doubled the size of the building. So it worked out good. It's just uh, the Mackles, this was part of the, if you bought a house on Key Biscayne, you, became, you automatically were a member of the Beach Club. That was part of their deal. Well, that was a pretty good deal. Yeah. Did Hurricane Betsy do any damage to the Beach Club? Oh, yeah, quite, yeah, quite a bit. It, Removed most of the beach and you know took all the old trees that were out on the beach mm -hmm. took them down it did a and what about the structure 
Not too much. It you know blew out all the screens and you know wow. whatever. But it was they fixed it. It's pretty solid. So what yeah. we're seeing today is pretty much the way it was built in like in back in 1951, 52. Well, no, it was added on to after 65, and then mm -hmm. Andrew damaged it quite a bit again. But it, the basic building survived both storms. Now Andrew was in 92. And they're right, exactly. Okay. Well, there's a lot of pictures here on the wall that I see. Um, I'm kind of intrigued by them. There's a gentleman that's, uh, his picture's behind you. Uh, who is he? That was old Carl Egg Young. He was, Egg was the manager here for 30 years before Mike O'Brien. Now, it seems like yesterday, but Mike's been here 20 years, so it's time really flies when it you're does. having fun, yeah. It does. Well, he must have been pretty uh, he was well quite, respected. He was. He was a very interesting fellow. Uh-huh. Well, over here I see a picture of the beach club. Let's walk over and yeah. you can tell us about This picture here, now this looks strangely, strangely familiar. Is this the beach club? This is the beach club. And this was back in the, in the 1950s. You notice the sands was not there. Oh, you're right. That, that was the empty land there. And in fact, that was in 1958 when this picture was taken, there was nothing on, uh, no buildings on the ocean as far as condominiums went. Only the Key Biscayne Hotel and the Silver Sands. That was the only two structures. The only one. So the uh, Sands. Uh, the Island House was the first condo in 1960. But this this was our beach, and uh, you can see the uh, copper tone umbrellas there. The fellow that Frank Craig that started Copper Tone lived over here. So, and this young lady here is about 10 years old. I believe that's uh, the young Holloway girl that uh, still lives on the key. She must be in her 60s now. So. Oh my gosh, what a cute picture! They grew of her. up right and. Uh, down below, we got the uh, regular Sunday volleyball game. The old, we came down, that's when we played six on a side. The old fellas, rain or shine, would come down and bat that ball around on Sunday. It was real popular then, huh? It was. It was a fun place. And uh, I see the ball in the air, and then what other people, but there's a lifeguard station there? Yeah, the well, right, exactly. And that was, that was the old, pretty much the, the beach is before it got eroded away, as it, before it was replenished. Oh yeah, it looks pretty big. Was that pretty much what people did on a Sunday afternoon? They come to the beach club and play volleyball. And pretty much so. That was a good, uh, a good. And this looks like the is it the young people or the adults or? No, no, these were people? old guys. These were, they were all. <laughs> these were old airline pilots and yeah. uh, whatever pharmacists. I was there, and but we played every Sunday and we had a good time. It was good. So uh, it was check a lot another of fun. one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you recognize anybody in the photo there? Oh, there's a, several out I tried to pick out, but they, their picture's not that sharp, and uh, yeah. a lot of them got older. That was that was <laughs> taken in the 1956. Okay. Well, here at the Beach Club, it's pretty fascinating to me because we have all these pictures of the 50s, and all right. okay. There's a lot of pictures here at the Beach Club on all the walls. Um, who decided, or when did they first get hung up? Well, the, the club decided a few years ago, and each one has a sponsor. I think for $100, $150, you uh -huh. could put your, little, your name on there and pick one out. Most of these came from Bristol's camera shop. He had a collection of old, old photos, and the uh, Historical Society has most of those now. But, uh -huh. and, uh, but that's a great idea to get sponsorship, get them all framed, get them right? taken care of. How long ago were they put up? Oh, they've been just the last few years, the last three or four years. They, the walls were blank before that. Oh, I think that's a brilliant idea. Yeah. So we can kind of walk along and amble. It looks like a tremendous assortment. Yeah. Did uh, Bob Bristol take a lot of these pictures? No, no, no. These were all taken before he was just a small child. Just oh, that's right. <laughs> 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 they were given to, to him through different people. Some of these are dated 1928 and 1950. There's <clears throat> this is a very interesting photo. It, it's labeled Key Biscayne Hotel and Village, uh -huh. but it's taken in 1953, and the Key Biscayne Hotel then was only the village. Oh. The hotel itself is missing. It was right here. Uh, the hotel was built in '54, so. Uh, so that's the site for the hotel. Exactly, and here beside it is the Key Biscayne Beach Club. Oh, that's where we're standing and right exactly, now. Exactly, and that was back before they even paved the parking lot. So now I recognize this because this is now Ocean Club. Right. Exactly. And this was all acres of the palm trees. You can see that that was the uh, old plantation. And it looks like a golf course in the middle, am I yeah, right? Yeah, a little putt, little chip and putt golf course. And the Mackle Company that developed the key owned and operated that hotel. 
Okay, so those are all villas. So villas would like be a little apartment that someone exactly. Could rent. They were rental. Was it uh, short term or long term? Oh, a lot of people spent the winter there. They spent two, three months there. Wealthy people. We had a very good clientele in the fifties and sixties, and very famous people. The Captain Eddie Rickenbacker had one. Ah, okay. Senator George Smathers had one. Uh -huh. uh, quite a few prominent attorneys and different people had. You know, they and they came every year and they. Uh, Rented a villa. And then the property next to it now, is that where the, is that Marzul that's next door there? Or? Yeah, that's uh, Casa del Mar. Uh, Casa del Mar. But that's not there. That's just bare vacant land. Exactly. There, there was nothing on the ocean back in 1953 other than this hotel and the Silver Sands Motel. That was the only two structures. The only structure. And then there's a swimming pool I see there? Yeah, this swimming pool was taken out in 65 hurricane. It, it got eroded away and it collapsed. And uh, so these villas on the front also collapsed in the 65 hurricane. That was Betsy, right? Betsy. Mm -hmm. Quite a hurricane. We're gonna, yeah, we're going to a long ways here. We got... And, okay, what are we looking this, at now? This is uh, early development of Key Biscayne in 51. You can see what we call the old timers. We call this the new section. Everything from Heather Drive to Mashta Drive. That was the original development in the shopping centers here. Oh, that's Crandon Boulevard right there? This is Crandon right here. And, oh. and up here you can see they're building what we call the new section, everything north of uh, Heather. And uh, before there's the Yacht Club goes in here much later. Okay, so and this the is Catholic looking Catholic Church was north. built here, exactly, looking north. This is, there's the entrance to Pines Canal right there. Oh, on Pines Canal you go across and then you'd hit, what, the towers? Uh, exactly, it runs into right side. where the towers is. And uh, then the island actually ended at Mashta Drive, and, oh. and Mashta Island was not developed at that point. Now is this Mashta Island right here? This is Mashta Island, again, on that way. We'll get on up here, the next one and, is... Well, before we go there, I just want to ask you, this inlet here, was that a boat harbor? Or That's Hurricane Harbor. And where was the original um, building that the, the Mathesons had, that I think they used as a church, or they were thinking about using as a yacht club? Well, that's the old Ma uh, Mashta House, which was... Does that show here? No, no, it's on the, on the west end of this land right here. Okay. Which is up here. Okay, great. All right, let's go look at that one then. Okay, now this is the Mashta House in 1928. This was the approach to it, and they were developing, you can see they're developing the key, and it uh, doesn't really show the house at all, it just shows the front yard there, because the house is here. Well, that's beautiful, we'll though, with that driveway and all. That's yeah, gorgeous. We'll see some pictures of the house further up. And what is that now? What is the property now? Is it one that's, property or several properties? No, that's the tip of Mashed Island. That's uh, quite a few properties. There's three or four mm -hmm. very large houses there now. Okay, and this is 1928. That Boy, was that's, 28. That's some picture that Going back, back exactly. And then over the next one, okay. we, we've got, uh, this was the old plantation. Uh, these were the houses that behind the barn. This is where the uh, Grand Bay property is now. Oh my, it doesn't look like Grand Bay to me. <laughs> no, these, these houses, you can see the old Model A Fords. This was in the 20s. Yeah. And they actually, the one house, the next one over from this was, became the Episcopal Church. And they actually, later years, moved it over to uh, Calusa Park where it became uh, the little playhouse. Oh, you mean that originally was the church? That was, uh, well, originally was a home for the uh, plantation workers. Oh, it was a house, then it became a church, uh, and then church, it became the then Colossal Playhouse. playhouse. Exactly. But it, and is this, like you're saying, the plantation uh, workers lived in these houses? They did, and this, this ran from Crandon Boulevard to all the way down to the ocean. The big house was down by the ocean. They don't have a picture of that here, but it, it was a bigger house. And were there a lot of plantation workers on the key there? Well, quite a few. There's another story. The you know, plantation never was very successful as far as uh, commercially for coconuts because it was just too expensive and they couldn't compete with the Pacific. Sure. But, uh, and now you, uh, to your background, did you grow up in Miami? I was born and raised in Carl Gables. So we, we came over here in 1951 and I actually came across the causeway the day it opened in 47 on my motor scooter. and. Uh, I remember when the family moved over here, they said, why would you want to live way out there, you know? <laughs> and uh, it was sort of the end of the road, and uh, no one dreamed it was going to... Although no one had any idea. ...turn out to be such a wonderful place. And while you are young, did your family 
bring you to the key to kind of scout and explore? No, actually, I sort of did that on my own during the during the war years in the '40s. We had a little boat in Coconut Grove and used to camp out over here in Bear Cut and also on the back side of the island. And uh, I'll show you some photos later of where the forest was and where we camped. You were pretty adventuresome because oh, yeah. there was nothing there and there was no gas stations. Well, in those <laughs> days, the, our boat had a four horsepower engine and it took us four hours to cross Biscayne Bay. Where the kids today do it in about 15 minutes. So, That's right. Uh, so with a you better have a paddle with you on exactly, that. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay, there, here's our lighthouse. There's the lighthouse how it used to be. You notice it's red bricks. Right. And a lot of them were being uh, eroded away and... Uh, there was no state park then, so, uh, and uh, they finally restored it uh, about 20 years ago, and they had to paint it white because that was the original color of the White House, and if, to get historical funds, you have to oh, do it. Back to the origins. And back when it was built in 1825, all White Houses were white, so that was the story there. Oh, and what, with the paint chipped off? Oh, yeah, the paint years? just eroded over the years, just left the bare brick, and Maybe today, in 20 years, our White House will be red brick again. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? And then I noticed some jetties coming out. What are those for? Well, they were put there when the seawall was put in in 1950 to help the erosion. So the lighthouse, the lighthouse used to, you know, is getting very close to falling in. So. It looks pretty close to me. <laughs> years ago, and the, they say in the 20s, it was a lot of land in front of it. It's amazing how erosion does it. Who took care of the lighthouse at that time? It wasn't really maintained. Uh, Mrs. Alamein, the owner of that property, uh, uh, she offered to give it to the government as a park, and they refused. Uh, you know, as a national shrine, and uh, <laughs> they didn't want the responsibility, I guess. Exactly, and it was much later when the state finally bought it and became Bill Bag State Park. But it was uh, it was interesting. I remember one of the the kids over there used to climb in there. This is all you could get inside of it, and one of our locals. Fell, oh dear! And he uh, broke his hip, and uh, <coughs> his father was going to sue Mrs. Alamein for having an attractive nuisance. Yeah, okay. And she very nonchalantly said, "Well, I just tear it down." And uh, they, uh, you know, <laughs> constantly shot, the lawsuit sort of folded after that. And, <laughs> Nobody and, wanted her to tear no, it down. No, no one wanted it torn down. Came to their senses. Exactly. I'm always interested in trees. Uh, those trees look kind of interesting. Those were Australian pines that were. Oh, they it's were planted there, they, weren't they? Yeah, That's they right. were planted, and uh, they they spread very rapidly. This is uh, this was taken in '58, and this was like eight years of growth. And oh. It's amazing how quickly those pines grew. I'll show you a picture later when there was none. That is totally amazing. <laughs> well, this looks like a nice place to sit. What's this a picture of? This is the uh, veranda on the Mashta house, and that was back in the '20s, '28, and it uh, later when Key came was developed. Of course, it was abandoned. The uh, community church and the Catholic church held church services there every Sunday morning in the early 50s before and they built their own buildings. Both at the same time, or they have no, different hours? They, they different hours. But they no, figured it out. No, I think. Well, that's pretty nice. <laughs> it was. And the Mashta house was built by the Mashta family? That was Matheson. A Matheson family? Yeah, Mashta is an old Indian name. But, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Matheson's built that, and he only lived there a short while, from what I understand. He, uh, it was quite <coughs> a long ways. Here's, but he you? had the home on the island, so that uh, while he had his plantation, there was a place to stay. I imagine. Exactly. It was sort of a, a really a retreat. He was a very wealthy chemical businessman. Okay. What is this that we're looking at? This is April 1929. Yeah, this was this was the island when uh, he first decided to build a plantation here. You see, Pines Canal went all the way through into the ocean. There's oh, a little bridge yeah. there. Okay. This is where the towers would be now, and the Mar Azul, and Casa del Mar, Ocean Club. And you can see the trees were just being planted. Oh, Ma I see all the rows. <coughs> right? Yeah. <coughs> Mashed Island was there, and there's the house out on the tip. Oh, right on the tip there, that's the house that we're looking right. at, at the picture before. Uh -huh. And everything south of the Pines Canal stayed uninhabited. Oh, okay, and that's part of uh, Crandon. That's or all the Bill, Bill Bags Park now, right, everything okay. starting here. And what is this little circle here that I see? That was just his entrance to the Master House, that was his little grand circle. 
And so the Matheson <laughs> family, like we said, lived out there to have a place on the key. Did they in, did they own all of Key Biscayne at that time, or a good portion of a it? A good portion of it, yes. They, uh, did he own the land, or was it leased land? No, he owned the land, and uh, that's how Crandon Park, he, he gave the park land, Crandon Park, to Dade County in exchange for building a causeway. And Charlie Crandon was the county commissioner that was instrumental, and that causeway was started in 1941, and the war came along, and it, they stopped altogether, and then finished in 47. Oh my, because that was, that was a long time in coming. Yeah, it was. It took a long time. And so they named Crandon Park, Crandon Park, instead of Matheson Park, they named it Crandon after Charlie, Charlie Crandon, Crandon right. who was, what he... He was a big, he was a county commissioner. He also owned a big drug wholesale house in Miami back in the early days. Very, very good. Very interesting man, and very more, good. more elaborate pictures of the Mashta House. Oh yeah, that. This is the Mashta House back in the twenties, labeled 1930. Uh, you can see they had a boat house here on the end. You could drive your boat in there, and two-story house. And on the top there was a uh, a sun deck that was all a uh, tiled deck. And they had a little harbor there, and uh, it's all protected <laughs> too. That's pretty good. And it stayed <coughs> till 1953 or four when they tore it down. They, uh, it was interesting. I, uh, I was in the Navy and I came home on leave and 30 day leave in 51 and I actually dated the girl that lived there. Her father was the uh, caretaker named Paul Pent. Her name was uh -huh. Joanne Pent. Yeah. And I would, I remember they had no, you no electricity or plumbing or. Any, Thing I, their stove was kerosene and their, oh their lamps were kerosene. I walk in the house and it smelled like kerosene, <laughs> but they didn't notice it. I said, you know, and uh, but then their water was in barrels there and whatnot. That's how well, they. It was pretty primitive living was, even back was. then. Exactly, and it was, but it was a nice place to live. And for water, did they have? Um, they they trucked it in. It was they had a big old container on a 50-gallon drum there and. And the toilet went out the side of the building into the bay, and they, they had <laughs> buckets of water to flush that. So. Oh, it was the old bucket brigade. Yeah, exactly. And then the boathouse, uh, they had a small boat that would yeah, just yeah. go into that enclosure that was, there? Right, exactly. It's yeah. like a little tunnel? Yeah, a little tunnel. It was covered. Oh, so that's a lot of protection. They must yeah. have had a lot of wind those days to build yeah, something they like that. Yeah, they did. They, uh, Always the design of a building. There's a reason for a design, why a they do something that way. But well, that's a pretty terrific uh, structure. It's a shame it was torn down, but yeah, you know, that today I'm sure the historical people would have clamored, but back then it wasn't wasn't that historical. Uh -huh. it was, I mean, it was sort of in bad repair. And you're a Navy guy, so the harbor there did it have a lot of problem with silt? No, it wasn't the deep harbor at all. They uh, later on, the people from the Sea Aquarium, the fellow that trained Flipper. He had some dolphins in there, and he closed it off with a little fence, and that was a short while. That was long after the house was gone. Oh, but that was a pretty good place yeah. to train the dolphins. It was. And then I understand, too, the house was built with, um, uh, used the seawater. Yeah, exactly, and they so had problems with their cement crumbling. Yeah, a lot of salt deposits were in it. Exactly. And uh, here we go to, this is Cape Florida Lighthouse from from the south side before the seawall, and you can see there. Well, that's there. a different view. Now, now it's more palm trees, which makes well, more sense. Well, now, yeah, now it's all seawall also. But uh, back, well, this part was palm trees. This this little area mm -hmm. was never cleared of palm trees, but it's a very small area. I'll show you later. There's another picture of it. Only the rest of it was just bulldozed or filled in with uh, fill. So this would be the extreme south end of the island. Exactly. Where we're looking from, exactly. out to sea, kind of where Stiltsville is. Exactly. Looking exactly. On the end. What is this here that I see? Is that are those rocks you? No, those there? were old jetties that had crudded away that they put in in the twenties to uh, help the erosion. Erosion, I guess, is always a problem. Yeah, this exactly. This is the start of the earth. Right. And here you got an old heavily forested. Uh, Road and that's Crandon Boulevard looking north there is just a <laughs> That's hard to believe that's our Crandon <laughs> Boulevard. A dirt road, yeah, but <laughs> just uh, unpaved and uh, 
And not much visibility either, is it? Exactly. Not, not at all. Kind of socked in. So we've got right. the palm trees on the left. And what's the tree on the right? Uh, those were just little plant. Uh, I think they were Florida uh, oaks there they put in there, but it wasn't, wasn't much. Were most of the trees planted on the key, you think? I know the coconut plantation was planted, but the other trees were Yeah, planted. well, they all were. I'll show you a picture later when there was, were no trees. Oh, okay. Okay. What a great shot this is. Well, okay. this is our modern era. This is sort of out of order, but you can see the, our beach was eroded. Today, people worry about our losing our beach, but uh -huh. you'll see here, this seawall is now still in the ground in front of the Ocean Club, but it's still got a lot of dune and whatnot in front of it. Wait a minute. Now you got me confused. We're looking now. This is the pro this, this is, is looking south from the beach club, and this is where the Ocean Club is today. Okay, and this way before was the golf course, and, and this the was the Key Biscayne Hotel. Key Biscayne Hotel. And, and you're telling me that seawall is still there? That okay, seawall is, is there, and if you walked along the beach, you could couldn't reach the top of it. That's how much had eroded. Oh my God! And what did they do? Bury it? Yeah, it's buried today, and the fencing in front of Ocean Club sits on top of that. Is that but, amazing? And, and the beach comes all the dunes and whatnot are built out so even though we're getting eroded towards the dunes that the dunes weren't there back in the 70s is that something and then they put some <coughs> jetties out these there. jetties were put in in 66 mm -hmm. after Hurricane Betsy before you needed Durham and all the permits the the Key Biscayne Hotel just replenished their beach which didn't last it uh, those jetties didn't do much good they had boards that would slide in and whatnot. Because uh, they used to think that that <coughs> would build up a beach, cause the sand exactly. to stay, but that you're saying that didn't work right. much. Right. Here you see the sand. This is the Sands Condominiums deck, the pool deck. Oh, and the, yeah. the ocean was right up to their seawall, and, uh, and now it's, it's out pretty far from even though we're claiming there's no beach. But you know, when they built these structures, I'm sure there was more beach when they built them. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it so was. So this happened over like a 10 year over, period? Yeah, over a 20 year period. I want to go here the next one. So there we got, the key is it was uh, back when it was eroded away, there's the Mar Azul, or the Casa del Mar, Mar Azul and the towers. And you'll see the beach was right up to their sea walls. At uh, high tide you couldn't walk the beach. No, and you're a beach walker so there, you exactly. know those things. It became very difficult. You had to, had to look at the tide. If it was low tide you could get by. Have you always been a beach walker? Always, you know, well, no, I used to work a lot, but uh, uh -huh. since I retired in 94, I've walked a lot of beaches. I know you're out there most every right, day. Right, every day. You know our beach. Okay. This, this is an interesting, this is Heather Drive, mm -hmm. and this is the uh, canal that went all the way up to the community church. Now, which canal are we talking about? Which canal is this, this was the canal that's no longer there. It was filled in. But uh -huh. this is where the little dock was, where they're going to, uh, for their coconuts. The, the shed was right there where they uh, brought the coconuts to ah, okay. take to market, which didn't do much. But a lot of people did, thought that the canal there by uh, the Hacienda Canal by the Yacht Club was, is not this one. This is the canal that was completely filled in, uh, when they developed the key. So this one was, I'm trying to figure out location. It was, it was by the community church that we exactly. have Exactly. Heather Drive, all, Heather the way, Drive. all the way to the bay. And, the, and look at the car. We just see the end of the car. Yeah. That was a pretty old car, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a 1928 Ford, you can see. I, I love the uh, pilings that they put in. Yeah. They look like uh, trees that yeah, were just that's kind of That's basically what they are. Yeah. yeah. That's what they Not are. Not real fancy. No, no. The, uh, we, okay, this picture is the entrance to the master house. His little drive, his circle, and his... Oh, yeah. His front door. It was very, very ornate. Had the large uh, archways and so forth. And you can see the, the finish was sort of rough with the uh, the sand and the salt and whatnot. Their mm -hmm. cement didn't stick very well like it would today. It was very pretty. And and I guess you made a lot of treks up to that front door. Yeah. Well, just a few. But uh, next we got this is uh, this is one of my favorites. A lot of people. We're always distressed after Hurricane that uh, uh, Andrew that all the beautiful trees in the state park had been there for so long. But if you see this picture, this was the state park in 1950. Oh my gosh, there's nothing there. It was it was pumped in a uh, deep in the canal here. They call the Cape Florida Canal or Channel, and 
put a seawall in and raised the whole park about two, three feet. And so it was all mud, and the only trees were those few palm trees down around the lighthouse up there. Well, so this area was kind of like a, a salt flat, really. It, exactly. It was just pumped in, and uh, well, it was just a mud flat. And this was the Pines Canal all the way to here where it was closed off. Now, Pines Canal, was that uh, dug out by the plantation That was dug people? out by the Mathersons, yeah. That was his, his boathouse was over here. And... Uh, his bathhouse, they called it, rather. Uh -huh. and, and so instead of having to go all the way around, he decided he could cut across. He made a little shortcut for himself. They, exactly. <laughs> that's what that was all about. Yeah, that's pretty wise. But that is interesting that uh, how low it was and how they built everything up. And we tend to forget those things yeah. in life. Yeah, you can see there's Hurricane Harbor. And mm -hmm. this was in 1950 when they were cutting, they were cutting the roads in. The houses aren't built yet there. They're just... Uh, They've got them staked out, and they've got the uh, the roads cut out, and uh, and the island ended in Master Drive. Nothing nothing south of uh, Master Drive. So that was a destination at that time. Exactly, that was. This is a pretty terrific road. Where does this go to? Well, it was the way into the Master House. This ran up along the the backside of Hurricane Harbor, and almost to the Pines Canal, and then to the Master House to the right. Uh, that's all not there anymore so it's hard to it's hard to envision and, envision. and what is that structure that's that out was there? A, a little house that sat out there for a lot of years it was a old caretaker uh, that uh, used to watch the alamein property and tony and he lived in there for uh, quite a while and it was the bed there was a little boat there and in the 50s they ran a little ferry out to the bikini club and at stiltsville and they had oh, the quarter deck that? club the bikini club and <laughs> You could, for 20 bucks, you could get out and back there, and that was a fun time. That was. Yeah, still swim it was pretty hot in those days, wasn't it? Yeah, that was. It was quite the place. Yeah, there was Channel 17 had a very good uh, thing on the Stillsville last month. Mm. Showed how they were built. And next we got, there's a, there's look at McIntyre running across the key, and you can see there was just sandy roads. It was, uh, that's when the palm trees were getting along pretty well, and the coconuts, and Yep, they look pretty hardy and pretty healthy. Yeah. And those were all planted. And this all became houses, so about, I'd say, 90% of the trees were cut down. To, they left a lot, of, about every mackerel house had a house, I mean a tree or two, We could, yeah. until the blight came and killed all of them back in the 60s. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. But that could have been a nice selling point to have a pretty palm tree in front of your oh, house. Oh, yeah, that was, that was what it was all about. Next over here we have this one. Okay, this says Canal Dock and Matheson Bathhouse. That it was in 1928, right? This is when uh, Matheson, This is when the Pines Canal went into the ocean, oh, and it was closed. The 1928 hurricane closed it off, took out this dock, and they never reopened it. But this, this bathhouse, the foundation stayed there. That's where the tower sits today. But during the 60s, the uh, 70s, the kids call that beer can beach the foundation was there and there was a little dirt road yeah. uh, you could drive down there and uh, there was a lot of empty beer cans there <laughs> they could have a little bit too much fun right exactly but uh, it was so this property is where now the towers exactly exist? this is the border that everything south of there is a state park a state park and this is the famous that was the Pines Canal Pines Canal still there but it ends over on Crandon Boulevard rather than to the ocean. And as I remember uh, in that property on the beach now, there's a lot of silt build up. It's kind of shallow out there, isn't well, it? Well, there's always been a natural sandbar right in front of the towers. That's, uh, and I remember I was active in the uh, beach restoration project we had in 88, mm -hmm. and uh, that we had the aerial views of way back in the 20s, and that showed that sandbar was always there, and then it tapered off. But it, it was an interesting period, and then, uh, you know, the state came and bought the uh, land for the state park, and... Uh, and thank goodness they did. <laughs> they did. It was a lot of well-meaning uh, people uh, stood out in front of the grocery store with petitions. Don't let the state buy the park. It's going to bring a lot of people on weekends. Oh. And I used to explain, the alternative is, I saw plans where, like, five resort hotels, oh. hundreds of... Uh, there was not a single, single family in that whole... 780 acres. I mean, it was all multi, and it would have been a disaster for the key. So oh, it that would have been tremendous. Would have been another 25,000 permanent residents, and uh, 
They even talked about running the highway all the way to, to the Keys, across Stiltsville and down to Elliott Key and to Key Largo, but that, fortunately that died too. Oh, there were a lot of controversy yeah. going over over the years. <coughs> it was amazing to me on these pictures is how much it's changed. I mean, I look at some oh, yeah. of the pictures, I don't recognize anything. No, no, I don't see uh, anything that's remotely recognizable. No, it's changed a great deal. It, and it, uh, I mean, in the scope of things, it's really not been that many years. Yeah, no, but you're there's right. been a lot of changes yeah. to the island. Yeah, it's back, it's all, uh, all condominiums on the ocean front, from the island house to the towers and uh, there's but no weren't you lucky to be able to see all those oh, yeah, changes? It was. I mean, you I were can... here, you were able to see uh, what was going on and be part of yeah, it to absolutely. help make some yeah. of the changes. Yeah. And your family was raised here. And yeah, no, it was a nice, nice period. You know? A terrific time. But, but thank you so much for sharing oh, and telling really? us about it because otherwise we don't know. Uh, we have no yeah, idea it's, what's going on. It's now, fun. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about before we leave, there's two pictures or two posters here. Uh, they say, Key Biscayne Winter White House. Now, I know you have to know about that, so right. what is that? Well, that was during the Nixon years. One of the gift shops printed up a bunch. They, uh, souvenir, uh, the president lived here on the key. And uh, that was President Nixon? President Nixon uh, said Winter White House. And I remember uh, his confidant and friend, uh, B.B. Rebozo, came into the drugstore, and uh, I used to uh, cancel mail with a Pitney Bowes machine, and it, the original cancellation said, Key Biscayne Winter White House had a few palm trees and yeah, and you did, did this by hand. Well, the machine uh, plugged in, but it was a pit. Yeah, we fed it by hand. Yeah. But uh, then the president wanted it to become the Southern White House rather than a Winter White House because of his property in San Clemente. He wanted oh, to California. Give him equal billing, and uh, so we renamed the uh, we put the new uh, cancellation Key Biscayne's. Uh, Southern White House. Southern White House. So those posters have a little history. They yeah, were used for a very short time. Yeah, so. they were. They didn't sell too many. I know someone donated those to the Beach Club. I think that's true. Very nice. Yeah. That to have them and to realize that all those things go out yeah. because we've had over the years had some very <coughs> interesting people who have lived on the Key. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to continue to have them. All right. So thank you so much on behalf of the Key Biscayne Heritage and Historical Society. Um, it's been a pleasure to bring you this production. And if you have any stories, if you want to share them with us, please get in touch with us. Uh, we'd love to hear it. Thank you again. I'm Terry.